Hello, I'm Norman Oliver. And I'm Ethan Weiser. And this is Common Agenda, the only show at Emerson that's guaranteed to better your health, increase your IQ, and get people to like you. Norman, I don't think we can promise all that. We're a news show. Look, no 21st century college student is going to listen to you unless listen to the news unless we can convince them it's better than what's on their iPhones, the newest issue of Rolling Stone, or whatever Shonda Rhimes is bringing to the table Thursday nights on ABC. Hey, now you leave How to Get Away with Murder out of this. The show's on hiatus. It's our time to strike. Just go with it. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Common Agenda. If you welcome the first days of spring by wearing only one layer of clothing outside, I wish you the best of luck in regaining feelings in your limbs. Here's a recap of what's been happening in the world while you've been attempting to get the blood flowing back into your shins. Acclaimed author Roxanne Gay visited Emerson's Cabaret last week to participate in a live reading of some of her work. If you don't know who Roxanne Gay is, you probably should because she's legitimately the coolest person ever. A feminist icon, Gay is the author of the novel An Untamed State and an acclaimed collection of essays entitled Bad Feminist. During her event, Gay was able to talk to a whole crowd of Emersonians about breaking into the writing industry and introducing their friends to the concept of feminism. Unfortunately, Gay was unable to answer my biggest question, how did she become literally the greatest person ever to walk the face of the earth? We are doing something very rare on Common Agenda. We are discussing sports! And not just one news story, but two. This past Saturday, the Emerson men's volleyball team won 3-0 in their game against the Emmanuel College Saints. This brings the team's record to 10-7 overall and 3-4 in the Great Northeast Atlantic Conference. It's a big accomplishment for a school that barely knows where the gym is located. There are a lot of words the, the name Emerson College might bring to mind. Film, hipster, show tunes, but one that it doesn't fit into the association game is football. On March 19th, National Football League Network Executive and Emerson College Alumni Association board member Mark Quinzel, 82, spoke to students in the Bill Bordy Theater discussing everything from the NFL's incredible successes to the worst scandals. He offered valuable advice to students looking to make it to the top, but oddly enough had no words of wisdom for the Emerson football team. The Emerson Police Department is bringing back their acclaimed RAD self-defense classes, but due to in increased interest for in the program, the course will now be available for men. The course is designed to help people learn how to identify aggressive behavior and get out of violent and dangerous situations. What the course will not teach you how to do is be a kung fu master. I repeat, we will not leave the course as a kung fu master. Please stop asking. But with all that being said, if you're interested in learning some fundamentals of self-defense, check out emerson.edu for more information about how to sign up. Emerson has always prided itself on being on a ridiculous number of top 25 lists, whether it's the top 25 film schools or America's top 25 hippest universities. Emerson always seems to find itself topping lists like nobody's business, which means it's no surprise that Emerson has found itself on the list of the top 25 of collegiate-inspired baby names. Yes, you heard that right, baby names. And while you can interpret this news any way you want, I like to just think of it as further proof that Emerson is infinitely cooler than NYU because, let's just be real here, no one is going to name their kid NYU. Ever. And now to the almost as charming as me, Javier Rodriguez with After Emerson. Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of After Emerson. Today I'm here with Patricia Bartavia. How are you today? Great, great. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. Oh, we love Emerson. You know, we were Emerson family. We were class of 44 theater and film. We used to teach stage design back in the old school when it was over on Beacon Street. So what did you do right after Emerson? What did you, did you have a job? Well, after Emerson is an interesting story. It seems that we were and a family that was much into music and dance and all that because in those days you didn't have computers and you didn't have programming so you did your own entertainment and we played Martin guitars so WEEI was having an audition and my sister and I went over there to audition and on the way home we lived out of town so the back base station the engineer was helping people on with the conductor was helping people on everybody was getting on the train and we ran and we slipped in the snow it was in uh, February and we fell down and one of the people we knocked down was a booking agent and he thought it was funny so he said come over to my office and a week later we were on the train to Hollywood 
That's amazing. And what brought you back here to Boston? Uh, my dad at 102 decided he wanted to retire. So he said, ladies, you've had enough fun. Come home and take <laughs> over the business, which we did. And so you own this business now? Uh, yeah. My dad is now passed on at 102. I'm 92. And uh, I'm running the business. And the name of the business is? Uh, Bartavian Incorporated. And tell me a little bit about what you guys do here. Well, we're a nonprofit family trust. The whole building is nonprofit, and I take things on consignment to help people. And what, is, what has been your proudest, most memorable moment in your career? Being in Emerson. Uh, see, the situation there was when we, we thought we needed to get some background in theater. Mm -hmm. At that time, the school was over on Beacon Street. So we went over to Beacon Street, and when we walked in the door, the president at that time was uh, Ross, Dean Ross. And uh, when we walked in the door, my mother looked at Ross, and Ross looked at her, and it seems that he was the dean at Oberlin, when she was at Oberlin College. She was poet laureate at Oberlin. Mm -hmm. So they knew each other immediately, and at that point, my sister and I could do anything. It was wonderful. We had so much fun there. It's a great, great school. So thank you so much for inviting us in and having us today. Oh, I'm so glad to have you, and please come anytime. We're all Emerson family, and we all love each other. Yes, yeah, so we'll be back for sure. Thank you. Wonderful. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Common Agenda. Back to you guys. Hi, I'm your in-studio correspondent, Rivka Herrera, and today I'm talking to Heather Festmeyer and Sarah Sassone about Alpha Phi Omega. So guys, could you just tell me a little bit about Alpha Phi Omega and what you do here at Emerson? Yeah, Alpha Phi Omega is a co-ed community service fraternity. It's the biggest nationwide fraternity, um, which is awesome. And we're actually a petitioning group. We're not chartered yet. And um, what we focus on in this chapter is socially minded service. So. And what are some things that you've done so far to have that motto get out to people? Um, well, a lot of the service events we do um, focus around socializing with other people. Um, so one of the service events we did for this past uh, semester for um, recruitment is paint sun catchers that we could donate to um, a children's ward in a hospital and we donated to Mass General. That's awesome. Um, how has been the process of trying to become a chapter and getting that all together? How did you start that? Uh, it, it was, it's been busy. Um, I come from Rider University. I was an undergrad there and I'm a graduate student here. And I met um, Nick DeRico, who just graduated last semester. And um, we met at this fellowship, ironically. He, he went to Stevens and he transferred here. And I was talking about, like, like yeah, I think I'm going to go to Emerson College for, graduate, for my graduate program. He's like, oh my god, I'm going to Emerson. We should start a chapter of Alpha Omega. I'm like, you have researched this. It's so <laughs> all exciting stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so anything big you have coming up in the next couple weeks? Um, we actually have Breaking Stigma, which is one of our biggest events that we're going to be holding. Um, and we're, we're just starting out, so it's going to be great. Um, it's going to be the 6th to the 14th, and it's a Mental Health Awareness Week, um, and we'll have stuff posted online for that. Great. So everybody make sure to look for that on Facebook, and have a great one, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thank and welcome to this week's episode of Focus on Film. I'm your host, Jessica Shorter Bunny, and today we're focusing on the film Free Pizza. Today I'm sitting down with the writer and lead actor in Free Pizza, Harrison Jeff. Thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you for having me. Um, so first, can you give our viewers a brief summary of your short film, Free Pizza? Um, well, it's basically about um, a young man who thinks too much and speaks too little, so he goes to visit a an old friend that he has the worst day ever. He realizes like how boring his day was and like basically his life is. So how did you develop the idea for Pete Pizza? Like what inspired you to mm -hmm. write that story? Uh, it was really weird actually. I had this idea of like just telling a story through facial expressions. Then I was just gonna film it in my room and I showed someone the script and they were like, you can't do this, let's go <laughs> film it. So we just got three people together and went out and shot it. So. Uh, and while we were shooting, I was like, this is going to be terrible. Because we were, we just had to like move our face like, hey, was like that and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it turned out 
uh, definitely better than I thought it would be. So I really enjoyed your film because I feel like a lot oh, of college you. students and, you know, pretty much everyone can relate to the feeling of, you know, oh, I wish I had done this, I wish I had said this. Was that sort of like the feeling you wanted to get across in the film? Like that was sort of like the message you were trying to send to the viewers? Yeah, I tried to like structure the film so that it started out kind of funny and then throughout the day it gets less funny and more real. Which it, it was new for me because I've always done goofy comedies and stuff. So this was the first like kind of dramatic thing I tried to do. And uh, it was weird. It resonated with a lot of people. Like I went home for a spring break and I was at my friend's house and his mom came up to me and said, oh, I saw your, uh, your short film. The ending like made me cry. I was like, oh. whoa, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry. But um, yeah, no, it was different, but it was a lot of fun. Are you hoping to make more films like that in the future, like more of like, I guess, an emotional, deeper impact than just sort of a comedy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so much more rewarding, I think. So definitely trying to move towards that. What filmmakers inspire you and like whose work do you look up to the most? Um, my favorite director is Woody Allen. And I put this up on um, like some social media sites and every comment was like, oh, reminds me of Woody Allen. What projects do you have coming up next? Do you have any like screenplays in the work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a few. I, I write a lot of shorts, so I've kind of got like a few to choose from, but uh, I'm trying to write a feature. But yeah, I think that would be a really interesting uh, step to take, trying to shoot something a lot longer than like seven or ten minutes. Well, we'll be really be looking forward yeah. to that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Well, thanks for sitting down with us, too. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks. Um, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Focus on Film. This is your host, Jessica Shirtabunny, signing off. And here are some upcoming events. Do you have a selfie for your LinkedIn profile picture? Do you still reference high school extracurricular activities? Is your only connection your mom? Never fear, there's still hope for you. Career Services will be offering a workshop in the Beard Room from 4 to 5 on Wednesday, March 25th. You will be guided through the process of beginning a stronger profile and learn how to use it effectively for internships and other career-related exploration. Now that Glee is officially over forever, you might find yourself desperately searching for a new source of delightfully cheeky reinterpretation of modern songs. If so, you'll be happy to know that Emerson's very own WERS has got you covered. This Saturday at the Cutler Majestic Theater is WERS's 10th annual All Acapella Live event, where college students from all over Boston compete for the title of Boston's best acapella group. The theme for this year's competition is Here Comes the Sun, because it feels like it's been years since the sun has actually come out, and because maybe it'll appease whatever vengeful god is in charge of the weather with a cappella music, the, and the sun will actually come out. Do you enjoy listening to Emerson students talk? What about if they're making up everything they're saying? But on purpose. If that sounds like a good time, come to the first ever Emerson Story Spectacular, Thursday, March 26th from 4 to 5 p.m. Join Words Apart and Mass Mouth Inc. on the 10th floor of Walker as student storytellers are invited to perform stories up to five minutes max around the theme of mental health. Students interested in performing should email wordsapartmag at gmail.com to be put on the roster. Did you know that the Earth is quickly hurtling towards being an uninhabitable wasteland due to pollution? I don't know about you, but that's certainly one upcoming event that I'm not looking forward to. Fortunately, Emerson College is taking one huge step towards ensuring this doomsday event never happens with Emerson's upcoming Green Gala. The gala will be a night of sustainable food, fashion, and fun with live performances from a number of student performance groups, as well as a special address from Emerson's own Captain Planet, President Lee Pelton. As icing on the eco-friendly cake, the night's proceeds will all go to Emerson's Green Fund, which in turn will help prevent events of Snowpiercer from happening in real life. Here at Emerson, we all know how difficult it is to be a young man growing up in this society. Hold on, hear me out. On Monday, April 6th at 7 p.m., there will be a screen of the documentary, The Mask You Live In, in the Bright Family Screening Room. The film follows boys and young men as they struggle to stay true to themselves while negotiating America's narrow definition of masculinity. And, will be followed by, and it will be followed by a panel discussion that you won't want to miss. Be sure to tune into the Wednesday show for everything Norman and I forgot to talk about. You won't let me embellish, and now you're plugging your own competition? Norman, it's the same show. We're just on two different days. Annalise Keating would be ashamed by your will to win. You would get, stop at nothing to get away with murder. Oh, brother. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone.